to see you. Yeah, good. I'm here in the beautiful Marquee building here in downtown Miami. Compass, you guys have a lot of good stuff going on in the sports and entertainment space and real estate. Can you just talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing and how it's evolving for, for you and for the company? Sure, so Compass really, first and foremost, is a technology company. You know, we're living in this world right now, Adam, of, of exponential growth in terms of technology. Just every industry is being disrupted. And within the Compass landscape, it's a technology company first. That's the culture, that's the ethos. And then we happen to do real estate, right? So, but by being a technology company, we are adding value in ways that any other real estate company is not doing right now for its clients. And, and then when you're talking about this value, you as someone who works in the sports and entertainment space, deals with athletes and high net worth individuals, what type of value are those people looking for in someone like you, maybe whatever it is beyond um, just someone who's gonna show them properties and say, hey, look, this could be good for you. Listen, a lot of people can write up a lease offer and uh, pick up a check from a client, right? So what I'm trying to do is add a lot more value than that. What I'm trying to do is really educate these clients to make them lifelong learners and to create a culture of accountability so that they can take the lessons that I'm helping them learn along the way through the course of doing a real estate transaction and hopefully doing many real estate transactions so that they can make good investments, good decisions, uh, create multi-generational wealth for their family. And with the athletes who are coming in, whether it's a rookie, veteran, what are you, what are you looking at in the terms of the differences between the both and how you maybe are advising them to go a certain way? So probably half of my clients are already outside of South Florida. So probably half of my business is already outside of South Florida. So every situation is unique. If you're a rookie, I don't care if you're a first rounder, a second rounder, fifth rounder, undrafted, or you're a veteran, you know, the idea is to tailor our specific approach and my specific approach to everybody's personal need. How are you financing the property? How much are you saving for yourself? Looking at the macro level and helping them understand, hey, you know what, maybe I shouldn't buy this property, maybe I should rent a property over here just for the playing season, I'm on a two-year contract. All right, we're in a beautiful spot down here in Miami. I'd love for you to show. We are. Let me show you around. This is a beautiful four-story penthouse. Doesn't get much better than that, right? No. 8,000 square feet overlooking Biscayne Bay. Pretty ridiculous. Is this something that you're looking to, to recommend or? You know, I would say I there are very few athletes that can afford this kind of place. This is a $14 million four-story penthouse. So. If it's an athlete, it's somebody who's making probably more money off the court than they are on the court. You mentioned earlier you were talking about the education side for athletes and you know there's been numerous stories of athletes going broke. What is the questions that you're getting for athletes and what are you trying to, to empower them to do? You know, listen, a, a big passion of mine is just helping guys make the right decisions. You know, to be a mentor, to be a, a teacher, to be a coach, as I'm approaching my 40th birthday now, I've been in the business world for almost 20 years now and, and I've learned a lot and now it's time to start giving back to, to a lot of these guys. So. It's really just tailoring a personalized education and not doing something for them just because they want it. Sometimes you have to say, no, hold on a second. This isn't what is the best thing for you and your family. There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. They need to understand that they have a very compressed window within which to make their money and save their money and then turn that into passive income. What is that transition you see with a lot of new money coming in and maybe not so much old money and where is it going, and especially when it pertains to sports and entertainment, just what those clients are really looking for in terms of a place to live or invest in. Man, that's a loaded question, Adam, because I'm the first person to say that typically owning your, your primary residence is not your best investment, right? A lot of people think that is, and it can be sometimes in an appreciating market. And real estate, up until I think the advent of Compass a couple years ago, really wasn't changing. Now, there's so much money pouring into real estate as far as the technology of real estate. Miami in particular benefits from a lot of foreign money coming in, a lot of domestic money coming in now. But at the end of the day, what is going to change the real estate industry is the technology. It's going to allow people like me to provide better service to the clients that are coming in. It's a ridiculous view. Yeah, it is. So this is an incredible view. We're outside. It's beautiful weather out. If you had to give people five tips, athletes probably specifically, what would those five tips be for athletes who may be looking to get into real estate, investing in real estate, buying their first place? What would your five tips be? Well, the first would be that I would read a couple books, right? So if they wanted to get a real estate license, I would say The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller is an amazing, incredible resource to treat the business like a business, not as a side hobby that a lot of people kind of get into it uh, yeah. for. I say the other part is to really understand the financial elements of real estate. So understand the difference between active income and passive income, understand financing, understand mortgages, understand appraisals, all the things that kind of comprise the financial arm of it. Uh, three, I would say understand values, understand how to disseminate demographics and understand how to look at values in a certain neighborhood, in a certain area. So number four would really be communication. Learn communication skills, because if you can't communicate properly to a client, to another broker, to an investor, and you can't carry yourself accordingly, you can't make eye contact, you're not gonna be taken seriously. So that's a really important part of it. So last but not least, find a good mentor. 
you don't have to recreate the wheel. This has been done before. So whether you want to go flip and rehab houses or you want to go invest in commercial properties, there are people that want to help you, believe it or not, come up and be successful. With your experience, can you just talk about how you got to this point and uh, you know, what you've learned along the way and, and just a little bit of your background? Nothing comes without hard work, right? You have to have a purpose, you have to have a plan, but you got to put in the hours as well. So I started off with a uh, basically a rap client who wanted to do a, a short-term rental on South Beach and now you know, several hundred athlete and entertainment clients later. And then really in the last several years, transitioning my focus to be as much of an educator and a, and a mentor as a service provider.